No, yeah. great, great, great piece. Thank you very much indeed for that one. <laughs> right, now on to our guest co-host, who today is an optimization and performance expert, passionate about aligning people with a higher purpose and inspiring societal change. Please welcome to the DXB today, Sarah for Aslan Al Hashimi. Uh, Aslan, great to see you. Thanks Thank for you. joining us nice, uh, nice here to on be stage. Here. Thank you. Listen, let's talk the traits. It's interesting, isn't it? That little chat before and all three of us um, got into the world of media, got into the world of presenting, etc. You know, a lot of people say, oh, well, how do you do it? How do you speak to people on air? How do you speak to people in live environments, etc.? When, when it comes to the skill sets that you see in ultra high performance, not to say that any three of we are ultra high, that's for sure, <laughs> but when it comes to great achievers, I mean, are there sort of innate traits? Are there innate abilities that they have over other people or not? Um, I think most of it is nurture versus nature. Okay. I mean, of course, your DNA and all of that plays your role and how, but most of it is how you were brought up. And most of the research shows that from the age of zero to seven, you are kind of your personality is locked to who you are. Mm. And that kind of development leads you to become a high achiever or not. So like have that you, personality trait. If, 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 if you're, you often hear, don't you, kids at school, in school classes, and teachers might call them dreamers or daydreamers or whatever. Yeah. That might just be that their concentration is elsewhere. Yes. Can you train yourself out of that? Can you train yourself to be a better concentrator? Of course, yeah. I, I mean, until very recently, the, the, the science of neuroplasticity has led us to believe that you can rewire your, your, your neurons, meaning that the way you were brought up and the way who you are as a personality can change by doing certain practices or certain modalities or you know one of the things that says that can change your mind who, who you are is a certain amount of hours of practice and then you can kind of really switch who you are mm. but also there are other things like meditation uh, yoga um, uh, hypnosis nlp that can fast track that change mm. if you if you know what you're doing and use it uh, wisely let's mm. put it that way well, let's talk about good habits and bad habits because I'm really into personal development. I'm a very goal-oriented person, but we've talked about before the show started how I have too many goals set up <laughs> and uh, it's, it's unrealistic expectations. Yeah. So what are the things that we need to do right and what are the mistakes that people are making that are getting in the way, like um, triggering that stress in us? I think let's first start by classifying what stress is and how stress is stress good for you or not because this is an internal conversation in my world. Is stress good for you or not? And the way I talk about it is there's stress and then there's chronic stress. Stress is what you use to, you can use to your advantage and chronic stress is prolonged amount of stress that can lead to disorders and dysfunction within the body and in the mind. A okay? debilitating amount, yes, right? Yes, yes. So what you want as a high achiever like yourself, because that's a trait of a high achiever, they want to start so many projects, they can't finish most of them, they want to do a lot of things, but that's part of your personality. Right? And if we're not talking about changing your personality, we're talking about how can you have certain practices within your life that will get you to harness your, your, your personality. So some of them will be learn how to start certain projects and finish them, right? And have the focus and the, uh, the discipline to kind of focus on one project and finish them. But if you want to start multiple projects, have a definite timeline and strategy and plan to kind of achieve it. But what often gets lost in the words is what are the things that you can do around it in order for you to always be um, in, the, in, the, in the mindset and in the mind frame to not allow stress to give you the negative effects of it, right? Share so, your secrets. So, what so, is it? So the, so the simple <laughs> things, the, the basic things are good sleep, good nutrition, and some movement and exercise, right? We, at the Ascension, we developed something called the 10 Pillars of Life Mastery, which is kind of reverse engineered from chronic stress, which are 10 pillars of your life that you need to master in order for you to be an ultra high performer, somebody that can perform at very high stress levels without allowing stress to really hold them back or hold them down. But the beginning, when I first started, it was three, the, the three uh, pillars of life mastery. And those were the ones I was saying, nutrition, movement and exercise and sleep. Sleep and um, uh, and mitigating stress, so recovery, we call it too. I mean, Amy, you're pretty good at all three of those. I don't know about your sleep, but your nutrition. Oh, I, I sleep very well. I <laughs> sleep like a baby. I eat really well and I love exercise. So maybe that's why I don't have a lot of stress in my life, but I struggle to keep focus. So 
What other reasons that apart from stress can you know kind of affect us if keeping focus? Because I have terrible. I mean, the, the 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 key thing to losing focus is how much stress you're exposing yourself at a certain amount of time. So. There are techniques like the Pomodoro techniques and things like that that, Does that highlight. Include tomatoes, tomatoes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's funny because if you search it on the net, that's the first thing that comes out. Like, yeah. <laughs> it's amazing. Yeah. Let's bring it back to food. So. <laughs> I think most well, actually most on. most companies that, that deal with that actually their logo is a tomato. Oh really? Yeah, I think it's just a, a funny spin to it. But it, the, the the science checks out. So it is a certain amount of work uh, intent with high intensity. So you do like 20 to 25 minutes and then you take five to 10 minute break. Okay. And you go on these kind of revolutions over and over and over and over and over until you finished your task of the day. And if hopefully, if you're a high performer, you'd be scheduled and you'd have your to-do list and your calendar all aligned to that. When you perform that, that way, in anything actually in life, uh, you can actually really optimize this going into stress and out of stress and into stress and out of stress. Because chronic stress is being pulled subjected to stress for a prolonged amount of time without a break what you want you want to cut these segments out so that you can harness the good aspects of stress which is focus and you know dedication and being able to be kind of streamlined with your with your with your work mm -hmm. without going into chronic stress which pulls you out of that then because you become fatigued okay what about surroundings um, the suggestion that you know you've, this is a this is a city designed on distractions. It's designed on that fast pace. You know, yeah. it's a work hard, play hard environment. Yeah. There's constant distractions. Is that there's, there's stress everywhere around you, yeah. uh, around you as well? Is is that a genuine excuse? Can you use that in in the sort of argument against I'm stressed because of this of my environment? Oh yeah, absolutely. You can you can use it. You can use anything as an excuse. Right? But yeah, you, but is it right to use it as an excuse, or is it down to yourself? It's 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 ne never right to use an excuse right. for you to, to to feel good about something negative within your life, mm -hmm. right? So it's up to you if you do it. No judgment. But if you really want to become an ultra high performer, you have to start understanding what is your role in everything. Yeah and own your, uh, your, your own uh, kind of being and your human experience mm. through that lens. I am the person that controls all the metrics in my life. So, so the only reason I ask is because everyone you ask, and obviously the traffic is busy at the moment, yeah. and obviously you're going to have moments when traffic is bad, but everyone you ask say, how are you? I'm so stressed because yeah. of the traffic, etc. Yeah. Yeah. And it's that sort of common, so, is, so I can't work out whether people are just allowing themselves to get stressed because yes. of the traffic and the time they're spending in traffic rather than accepting it yes. and trying to make the most yeah. of it. Look, you can't I'm, beat I'm, it. I'm at fault with that. I mean, I'm not yeah, yeah, we all that. are. We, we all, all are. are. I mean, yeah. you're living, you have to understand that you're living in a city that's, that's extraordinary in that, in that respect. Like you are living in a city that's one of the top, yeah. you know, yeah. 10 if not five cities in the world. But with that comes certain things. And if you're choosing this lifestyle, you have to also understand that that comes with it. Yeah. And so you have to learn strategies to mitigate that. For example, when I'm really stressed when I'm driving, I always choose to breathe through my nose and out my nose to kind of relieve the stress whenever I feel it coming. Nice. But I'm so trained to know that I'm stressed out or not stressed out that I can feel it coming through my breath and how I'm breathing. Am I breathing shallow? Am I breathing deep? Love that. And all of these things. Yeah. So this is a simple thing. You're stressed out, you're driving, breathe through your nose and out your nose and make sure your breath is going down to your belly. Right, but don't do that too long because you might kind of <laughs> yeah. out. Right, do it like five breaths and you will see your stress immediately. Perfect. I've seen Perfect. that work myself. I saw we're going to continue to get lots of tips. We're unfortunately a little bit out of time, but up yeah. next we've got a corporate trainer and yoga instructor ready to dive into how yoga boosts mindfulness and focus. Don't go anywhere, guys. Be right with you. See you in a sec.